Major talks about killing your premier. Add on top of that the North's general hate of the East, and you can start to get the picture of the sort of tribal tension Nigeria was heading towards. One thing I've noticed, Premier, while I've been here, is that Northerners seem to have, I might almost call it, obsession about the Igbos. Could you perhaps explain that to me? Well, the Igbos are more or less the type of people whose desire is mainly to dominate everybody. If they go to a village, to a town, they want to monopolize everything in that area. If you put them in a labor camp as a laborer, within a year they will try to emerge as headman of that camp, and so on. Well, in, in the past, our people were not alive to their responsibilities, because you can see from our northernization policy that in 1952, when I came here, there weren't ten northerners in our civil service here. Then I tried to have it northernized, and now all, all important posts are being held by northerners. Is this policy of filling all key posts in the north solely with northerners and not with other Nigerians a temporary or permanent one? In actual fact, what it is, is a northerner first. If you can't get a northerner, then we take an expatriate like yourself on contract. If we can't, then we can employ another Nigerian, but on contract too. This is going to be a permanent, I should say, for the, as far as I can foresee, because it will be rather dangerous to see the number of boys we are now turning from our, all our learning institutions coming out with having no, no work to do. I'm sure whichever government of the day might be, it will feel rather embarrassed and it might even lead to bloodshed. Doesn't this damage the idea, sir, of uh, all people in all regions in, in Nigeria being fellow citizens of one country? Well, it might, but um, you are, I mean, new to our region, but how many northerners are employed in the east or in the west? The answer is no. And if there are, there may be ten laborers employed only. All right. That, that is Amadou Velo. Interesting discussion they had there. <laughs> What, what, let, me, let me first get your first impression about this video before I share my... When I began to study history and study the whole thing that happened at that time, I began to understand him better. Mm -hmm. he, when he came, he came to power under the campaign of North first, just like uh, this American man now, Trump. Trump, Is, uh, Trump now say America first, mm -hmm. and people are still hailing him. So that's exact, very similar to what this uh, uh, Hamandu Bello was doing because he came together, he came as a premier to campaigning, actually they call it northernization policy. That was his whole campaign something, northernization. And what pushed him to do that was because at the time of independence or just before independence, the people were mostly educated the most educated people in Nigeria were Igbos, actually. It is later on that, thanks to Awolowo, that the Westerners, the Yorubas, you yeah. know, uh, overtook and took that position. Mm -hmm. But before, it was the Igbos. And the Igbos were not just the most educated, they were the most enlightened in the, because of their trade and because of their traveling. So they were traveling, and then they had a lot of them in the army. So imagine that out of the in Nigeria, we have over 300 national, uh, nationalities, right? Okay. And there were, let's say, by the time of independence, let's say we had 500. Like just, I forgot the number, but I, will remember, I, will, I can find it. Uh, I think I wrote it in one of my books. Let's say we have 500 officers mm -hmm. in Nigerian army. Out of that 500, no, let's even say, well, let, let's, let's say 100. They had, well, let's say we had 100 officers, top officers, the top notch officers in Nigerian army. Out of that hundred, eighty of them were Igbos. Out of and we still have three hundred other tribes. So, mm. so ten of them were uh, Yorubas, maybe. And this was at the point that was the kind of thing in the civil servants also. Yeah, so this. That is what he mentioned. And it, it, but in the kind of civil service it was even worse. Eight people, no not seven, seven people were Igbos. In the civil servants, not of the East though. <laughs> but of the north, yeah. two were Yoruba and one 
only one is enough that. Yeah. And he was one of the enlightened and educated northern at that time. So he came to say, no, this is not just. If you want to build one Nigeria, let's build one Nigeria, but after we raise up the north to come to the level of the west and of the east. Mm -hmm. That's what he was saying. And that's why they denied the independence. Because we were supposed to have got the independence since 57 or 58. But they said, no, let us raise our people's level first. So that's what he was referring to. Mm -hmm. But it's not that. But, what, but when you listen to the person who is commenting, and the commentators of today, mainly Igbos, they always refer to this speech as a proof of the hatred of the North so, towards the East. Yeah. But this is not hatred. This is a policy. But he was not just talking against the Igbos, he was talking against the Yorubas too. He was talking against all other Nigerians too. So I said I would never agree with him. But after studying what he was going through, I mean, what was happening, and you, if you then later on study his result, he, this man has done so much for the North through that northernization, he was able to you know, bring life and, uh, and bring so much development to the North. But it was wrong by doing it at the expense of other Nigerians and the Igbos. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to create more opportunities for the Northerners, but not at the expense of the Igbos or other Nigerians. Mm -hmm. So also, it was not politically correct, but it was sincere and truthful. But it was not, I, didn't, I don't see it as hate. Mm -hmm. that, one, that time, it was not hatred. And he was also making a point that Igbos, they don't try to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And the point he was making is that the Igbos had a tendency of pushing themselves forward, even in, the, in, the, for, in a different, in a different territory. Which is still to today. It is still today, okay. If it is still to today, so which means if I were an Igbo person, I would have, no, the, the way an Igbo person would tell you is that, oh, we are just uh, industrious, we are just brilliant, we are smarter than everybody else, that's why. Mm -hmm. But if I were them, I would have advised them to say, no, teach your people to be more humble. Teach your people to be more meek. Teach your people to embrace more of service than dominance. If you will have the attitude of service and attitude of humility, you will be better embraced. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So, you know, so he's talking about equality. With the, with the, within the Igbo people that needs to be addressed as well. But the person who was talking there, he was talking about hatred. He's not talking about what could we address? What do we need to also do better? They want other nations to change. Mm -hmm. They want other nationalities to change towards them. To receive what, them more. To receive them more. But they are not considering changing yeah. towards other nationalities mm -hmm. in their own attitude and behavior as well. But personally, I don't see much problem with the Igbos. I don't see that, that as a big problem, really. I think uh, most Igbos that I know are very humble people. The ones that I know, I don't know the ones I don't know, but the ones that I know and have met, they are very humble, and they, they have learned the lesson of being humble and submissive. I think Nigeria has evolved since that time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and most of the Igbos that are really successful, they have learned that lesson. They have, maybe because they have mixed up a lot with other nationalities and they have traveled. Mm -hmm. So you know that for you to really, you know, have a headway, for you not to be hated, it's not going to be in Nigeria, it's not going to be in the North alone, mm -hmm. it will be everywhere. everywhere. You still need to show that, meekness. you know, meekness. And most of the Igbos that I know, they are like that. They are very meek, they are very mm -hmm. humble. You know, I like them. I, I don't have any complaint about Igbo or anybody personally. Well, I guess some, some, Igbo, some Igbo people will beg to differ because reading oh, some of your, oh, your uh, speeches, speeches my talk. and everything. Yeah, my talk are always not about the Igbos, but about the Biafra yeah, okay. iPod people. Yeah. It is the iPod people that I, am, I, I answer the way because they have been ill-informed mm -hmm. and they have been um, deceived the iPod people. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's not only me who should be speaking against that, but I think that all normal Igbos should be speaking against the iPod people yeah. too. The Igbo elite and yes. intellectuals. Yes. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Now, we need to spread this word and we need to do it together.
For that to happen, we need your help. Just five little steps that you could help us to spread the word. Number one thing we need you to do is to like the videos. Please go like this video right now. Number two, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Number three, we need you to press and click on that notification bell. You see the bell? Go press on it. And number four, we need you to go comment. Write your comment, good or bad, just write what you feel. Number five, share, share, share. Share on every platform. Share on Instagram. Share on Facebook. Just share and spread the word. Thank you so much. All right. Blessings.